G'day guys, how are you? I hope you're all doing very well. Spanish Gem 669, Friday review for the House of Horror. Now this is going to be my last review for the next two months. I, next week I'm going overseas, so I won't be doing uh, any reviews for the House of Horror, so someone will be filling in for me. But don't worry, when I return to Australia, I will be resuming my Friday spot. So before I leave, I thought I would do a review of a very interesting film. I actually reviewed this on my personal channel, but because it is a very interesting movie, and that some of you may not be aware of my personal channel, I thought I would do it again. So it hasn't been reviewed yet, so I'll take the opportunity now. It's an American independent horror film, English language, released in the year 2009, directed by Chad Ferrin, and this film is called Someone's Knocking at the Door. And the story to this one is as follows. Up-and-coming horror maestro Chad Ferrin delivers this gruesome tale about a group of friends being terrorised by a pair of psycho killers. In a nod to 70s indie splatter films, the story follows six college classmates on a drug and sex filled weekend. When one of them is brutally murdered, it soon becomes clear that one by one they have been stalked by the unknown killers. So the movie centres on a, a group of six college classmates. They're all doing their um, exams to become doctors. Uh, very strange that they're doing this because they seem to be drug addicts. You know, they're always high on some sort of drug. They're always willing to experiment. So there's a new drug that comes along and these college classmates want to experiment with it. So they set aside a weekend to have a sex and drug fueled experience and to heighten their experience they decide to go down to the hospital archives and read up about a, a married couple that just so happened to be America's most notorious serial killers. So Fred and Wilma Hopper, they had very gruesome ways in dispatching their victims and it seems to be a pretty cool idea to do while they're doing drugs. So when one of these college classmates turns up brutally murdered, there are indications that it might be have, have something to do with the work of Fred and Wilma Hopper. So in some way, these serial killers may have unfinished business. So they continue to get picked off, these uh, classmates, and so um, they have to find out the truth behind the identity of these killers, otherwise they might not see the, the light of day. So if you want to know how the movie unfolds, please go out there and see this film for yourself, because that's as far as I'm going with my synopsis. Now my thoughts on the film. This one is a very tricky film to review. It's definitely not for everyone. This is a very, very provocative film. It centers on a lot of sexual violence. There's a lot of rape. There's male on female rape. There's male on male rape, and it is really shocking stuff. Now, as far as extreme cinema is concerned, it's not the most extreme film you'll ever see. But if you're only a casual Friday the 13th horror fan, then I would be very, very cautious stepping into this one. Chad Ferrin shows that he has a lot of balls. He pushes the boundaries of, of what is appropriate in horror films, and it really does set a standard, especially in American horror, where I actually feel it lacks these kinds of filmmakers. So everything... Uh, that you don't want to see is shown in this movie. It's done in a very light-hearted way, but having said that, it's it will still shock you because there are things in here that you would never thought you know you would have ever seen in a film, and you're probably wondering why you're watching it, and probably wondering what the heck was going through the director's mind. It's just one of those sorts of movies. For a low-budget movie, it was expertly shot. It's a very psychedelic film. Uh, so it kind of feels like you're on a trip as far as drugs are concerned. I've never been on drugs, but I could imagine, you know, this is what it'd be like. This is the closest experience that I'll ever get without actually taking them. It's kind of an indicator as well about the power of drugs and how um, disruptive and destructive they can be. So I think it is a little bit more to it than uh, first meets the eye, but it will get you because of its provocative nature. Um, it doesn't take itself seriously, but it doesn't mind showing you very, very hideous things. So it is a true horror film. Now, the soundtrack, very good, very screechy, kind of feels like you're in Satan's graft. And it's just a very un uncomfortable experience, but at the same time, it's funny. So you don't really know what to expect. And what you get is just a ride that you will not truly understand or believe what you're actually seeing. But in the end, I actually liked it. I thought, you know, a lot of people didn't like it because um, there's something that happens towards the end that they thought ruined it. I'm not going to tell you what happens, but I actually thought it made sense. And it gave the film a sense of realism as well. So uh, the, the pair of John and Wilma Hopper were really good. Uh, as I said, there are some very exaggerated kills. But, um, yeah, for Gorehounds, we'll really, really like this one. Yeah, as I said, it's very hard-hitting violence, and it's something that is a very... Uh, it's very reminiscent of 70s exploitation films or splatter films. So if you're a fan of that kind of stuff, I would highly recommend you check this one out. But as I said, it is for the more hardened uh, horror fan out there because it will shock 
and maybe discuss uh, the, the casual film fan going out there. So all in all, I'm giving it three stars. I'm a big fan of this one. I haven't seen Chad Farron's other film, Easter Bunny Kill Kill, but if this is anything to go by, then hopefully Easter Bunny Kill Kill will be memorable as well. So three stars for the American independent horror film, Someone's Knocking at the Door. All right, guys, that's my review. As I said, that's my last review for a few months. So until I get back from Argentina, take care of yourselves, keep watching horror, stay safe, and I'll see you later. Bye.